a few months ago i shared with you guys my dad's croiler chickens at that point they were little tiny chickens you know very very tiny probably just eight ten days old fast forward today this is it oh my god this is it can you believe can you believe how quickly they grow that's why i love chickens like the difference is so obvious it was just the other day that i was holding them and you know they were little tiny babies and here they are these are probably bigger than my chickens should even be like two kilograms or more bigger than my chickens like just look at it look at the breast look at the comb wow hi guys welcome back to the channel dr daniel over here a retired medical doctor who is very passionate and interested in poultry farming. I love it. Oh, I say that with lots of pride because being a retired doctor at my age, it still doesn't feel real, but yeah, 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 that's it. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you haven't hit the subscribe button, come on, what are you waiting for? Please smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, that way you never miss out on an upload. So guys, these chickens we have over here are croilers. Croilers, if you don't know why they are, they are birds, they are dual purpose birds which were originally bred from India, but then they were shipped all over the whole world. We have them very commonly here in Uganda because people like them, they grow super quickly. You know, in 12 weeks, if it's an F1 generation, it could have put on 3 kilograms, not over 2 kilograms, 5 kilograms by the time they are, you know, 5-6 months, they can even get up to 5 kilograms. And then they also lay quite a number of eggs, so it's a good breed of birds. You can see this one over here. This is probably one of the smaller ones on the farm, yeah, because you can see it's comb. It's probably not as big, you know, um, and the body is probably not very big, but these way more than my birds. Now, my, these birds are probably around 10, 12 weeks. My birds are around 18, 19 weeks. So there is an obvious difference. These ones are probably two months younger. Not probably. Actually, they are two months younger, but they were heavier because they grow quicker, they consume food quicker. Now, these are my dad's birds. They are an F2 generation. Now, I talked about F2 generations before, but if you don't understand what F1 and F2 mean and all those things, I've actually made a video about parent stock and how birds are bred. Try to explain it. I'll leave a link to that video right here. But these birds came from an F1 generation. My dad had... Um, commercial croilers before an F1 generation and then these were the chicks that came out of that. So if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, this house should be very familiar to you. Yeah, I decided to return the favor to my dad. So this house, if you know, I built this chicken house on my dad's land. This is not my land, it is, it's his land, his inherited land. So he gave me a small section just to be able to build this house on. And the time he brought in his birds, he did brood them from another place because at the point, my chickens had fall typhoid and they were dying. We didn't want to subject new young babies to the same condition. So he did brood them from somewhere else. But after some time, that place grew too small for him. So he decided to bring them in here. I let him bring them in here because uh, the plan was that after some time, he was going to take them to another place, which is building. But then I thought, oh, well, it's just 12 weeks and the birds will get out. So just keep the birds in. So I let him use the place. This is the lower floor of my chicken house. Actually, up here, we have my layers. We have the layers up here. So in a very short time, probably over the next 10 or so days, the birds are going to be getting away from here. My dad is taking his birds away because they're almost reaching maturity, so he's going to be selling them off for meat. So ideally, these birds can be kept for both meat and eggs. But this time, my dad has kept them for the meat. I advised him not to keep them for the eggs because croilers, naturally, are not like the best, the most prolific layers. My layers over there, those are called the Tetra SL, can lay up to 330 eggs a year. You know, te Tetra SL, the Issa Browns, they can lay up to 330 eggs a year. These, the most prolific of these, would lay only 180 eggs a year. Which is not terrible compared to the local birds. You know, the local birds would probably give you 120 or 100 eggs every year. This is 
180 eggs a year and that's 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 really good but then this is an f2 generation guys this is an f2 generation so they'll never be as prolific as the f1 generation so these would probably give you maximum 130 120 eggs a year which is not you know effective if you're considering putting in money and keeping them around and only giving 120 eggs a year it just wouldn't make sense so the ideal thing would be to keep them for their meat which is what he's actually doing at the moment so the birds have put on weight right now soon he's actually going to be selling them actually i'll just do a small advert for him over the next 10 days if you're in uganda and you want croilers my dad is going to be selling these chickens you know i don't know how much i don't know you know, but I leave his phone number <laughs> in the description for this video. For a limited time, I'll be getting it off after some time. Once he has sold off all the birds, but for now, I'm going to put his phone number in the description. So if you're in Uganda and you want croilers over the next 10 days, just give him a phone call. He's going to serve you well. So the other thing I've noticed is that compared to my chickens, <laughs> these birds are not loud. My layers over there are loud, like really, really loud. When you're inside there, they're just making noise for you. These are generally quiet birds. The only sound I notice is when they are pecking each other. These are more ferocious birds. You know, they have their beaks on. They were, the beaks were not trimmed. So once in a while, they are fighting, pecking themselves. And because of that, you hear that, you know, irritating sound once in a while. But they are generally more calm birds. My layers would be pecking my tripod over here. You know, they would be pecking it. I would just be hearing to -to 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 the entire time. Here it's quiet, it's like they don't even notice it, they're not curious, they don't give a damn about it. So they are generally more different birds. So that was it guys, just a quick look at the croilers on the farm. They are growing up well, I like how they have turned up, you know they are put on the weight. The weight is not perfectly uniform because... Because they are an F2 generation, like clearly they would never, they would just never do as well as an F1 generation. The genes are all mixed, they are closer to their parents than they are to the F1 generation. So because of that, you'll find some that are quite small and then you'll find those ones that are really, really, really big. So that's the difference we are having here. Otherwise, thanks guys for watching. My dad has been feeding them on commercial feed and these, he has had to feed them a little bit more for them to get to this weight because... They're not an F1 generation, so they don't convert the feed into weight as, as well as possible. So they should probably have been reaching, let's say if they were to have reached, let's say one kilogram at, let's say six weeks, these ones probably reached at around eight weeks because they don't convert the food as well. So that's why it's really important for you to keep an F1 generation if you're keeping them commercially. If you're going to be free ranging the birds, it doesn't really matter because you don't care. You're not paying them for the food. You're not... You're not putting in any money really, you're just letting them free range. So if it takes one year for them to get to the target weight, it doesn't really matter. But if you're investing in your money for the feeds and everything, then that's really important. You want them to convert that feed into weight as quickly as possible. And that's why it's important for you to have an F1 generation. Thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Lots of love. Catch you very soon in another video. Bye-bye.